Hello, my name is Mrs Smith and I work at Bishop Audham's Primary School, one of the schools in the Hamwick Education Trust. Now, one thing I lead at that school is RE. Now I wonder, do you actually know what RE stands for? Have a think. Now RE stands for Religious Education. And yes, it is looking at different religions, hence the name religious, uh, but it's also looking at lots of different worldviews. And that's why I quite like RE, because it gets you thinking about, well, what do I believe? What do they believe? And, and how does that fit in with my beliefs? And do I have an opinion about that? It really gets you thinking, it gets you searching, and it gets you really uh, considering what you then believe. So we're going to be exploring some RE together over these next 10 sessions and in particular looking at community. Now community is such an amazing thing to look at through the eyes of religious education. We're going to be thinking about how you feel, about where you belong, what you like, what you don't like, how you then fit into communities around you. And then we're gonna be looking at different religions and different worldviews and seeing how they link into community. Now, for some, you might be thinking, oh, religions, I don't follow a religion. That's perfectly fine. A lot of this will be about actually delving into the things that we could learn from different religions and applying them into our own lives. We're going to be looking at some sacred texts from different faiths and seeing what they tell us about how we can live in community together. It's such an exciting little journey that we're going to be going on uh, in these 10 sessions and hopefully by the end of it all we'll have been able to really have expanded our knowledge and expanded our minds about the different values and the different things that not only we believe but lots of people around us may believe and um, respond to. So please put your seatbelts on. We're going to be going through this journey together and, and hopefully um, you'll really, really enjoy it. There's going to be some nice creative things along the way. So let's get ready to go. Now, the first session, we're going to be looking at who we are and where we belong. So I'm just going to share a slide with you. Please bear with the technology with me. I will do my best to, to give you everything that we are, are doing. So here we go. So this is our first session, as I said, we're looking at who we are and where we belong. And for this session, you are going to be requiring the following things. So I'm just gonna show you what you will need. So today you will need two pieces of plain paper or lined paper, it doesn't really matter, and at least one pen or pencil. If you've got some different colored pens or different colored pencils, then yeah, get them. They'll be nice to use along the way as well. Pause the video here and go and collect those items now. Brilliant, fantastic. I hope you've got all the items you need. Now, the first activity I'm going to get you to think about today is about how unique and special you are. And to do that, I want you to get out one of your pieces of paper and one of your pencils or pen. And I would like you to draw an outline of your body. Uh, it doesn't have to be really neat. It can be like my one, a little version I made. So I want you to draw an outline of your body, making sure that there's space around the edge, but also space in, in the middle. Okay, so have, pause the video here and draw your body outline now. Brilliant. I hope your body outlines are better than mine. In fact, I'm sure they are. So what I want you to think about, first of all, is about how special and unique you are on the outside of your body. And so on the outside of our body, I want you to think about your eye colour, maybe your hair colour, how long or short your hair is, maybe different clothes you wear. Uh, maybe there's something unique, like I've got freckles, for example. So maybe you want to think about that. I'm going to share a screen with you now just to show some prompts as what I want you to think about as you draw around the outside of your picture. So here we go. Got a lovely outline in the middle, a bit better than my blob, I think. So I want you to consider what is your height? What is your eye colour? 
what is your hair color? And then maybe some other things that make you really special and unique on the outside. Here's one I made earlier. So you can see here, I've focused on my eye color is being blue. I focus on my height being five foot six. 168 centimeters tall. I've talked about how I love wearing things that are, are blue and fine tops with any blue in them. So pause the video here and write some thought bubbles all the way around the outside of your body outline that shows how you, you are unique on the outside. Fantastic. These drawings are looking brilliant. Look how unique and special you are. Now I want you to think about the insides of your body. Now I know that sounds strange, but I want you to think about some feelings that you might have inside your body. I want you to think about maybe the thoughts that you have. So I've got some prompts here. Um, I want you to think about maybe the different emotions you usually show. Maybe are you? Or maybe you're a happy person a lot of the time. So maybe that's something you can consider and write on your drawing. Maybe some of the things you love to do or absolutely like. So it might be a type of food that you absolutely love, or there might be a type of food that you absolutely dislike. What things are you good at? Maybe you can write some things about that. Maybe some hopes that you have for the future. Who do you want to be when you grow up? Basically, what makes you, you on the inside? Here's some things that I wrote to give you some ideas. And I've chosen a different color. I've written, I am a happy person. I think I genuinely am happy, quite smiley. I love swimming. In fact, I'm going swimming tonight. So can't wait to get in the swimming pool. I like singing. And I absolutely will blast out a song, even in lessons. Children absolutely love me. <laughs> um, I've written here that I am positive, very positive person. And I've written here that I try to help people when I can. So pause the video here and jot down in the middle some of those thoughts and feelings that maybe you show and you feel. Fantastic. You're all doing a brilliant representation of you. Well done. Now, I want you to just take some time now to look at your outline and compare it with mine. Let me put it in the center there so you can see. You might have the same hair color as me. You might have the same eye color as me, or you may be completely different. Different is good. Now take a look at some of the inside feelings. Are they the same or are they different? Think about this. People who look different on the outside often have the same feelings or hopes as other people going on inside their bodies. They might have the same values of, of courage, of, of faith or respect, for example. So although you might look different on the outside, you might have some of the similar feelings and emotions that maybe I am showing. Or maybe if you were to compare this with a friend of yours who's doing this learning as well, you might have something similar. You might have something different. But remember, different is good. Now, for some of you, you might have actually thought about already a, a faith that you might belong to. Now, I'm going to share a screen with you now. Um, and this just shows how unique um, two, two children that I want to introduce to you are and what they wear on the outside. So here's a picture of Rebecca and here's a picture of Ruth. Now, Rebecca and Ruth belong to a community group, they belong to a religious group, and they show that through what they're wearing. Here's the, the girl called Rebecca may look like someone in your school, but she wears a silver um, six-pointed star. It's actually called a Star of David. I don't know whether you can see it, it's quite light on the screen. And that shows that she belongs to the Jewish faith. So on the outside, she's wearing that symbol of her faith. But on the inside, she'll also have that feelings of belonging to that faith of Judaism. Very special, very unique for her. Now, if you look at Ruth there, can you spot her symbol? I hope you can. Her symbol is of a cross hanging from her neck on her jewellery there. And that's a, a Christian symbol. It shows that she belongs to uh, a Christian group or follows the Christian faith. 
And again, on the outside, she's showing that symbol. But yet on the inside, she'll probably be following things that she learns through being a Christian and having those strong values. Now, Rebecca and Ruth might hold those strong values uh, that, that, that are the same. They might really have faith or courage or respect, like I mentioned earlier. But they both belong to different groups and they both show maybe their, uh, their values and, and feelings, um, maybe in a different way sometimes in the practices that they do. But they also have, they're united because they also have those same kind of values. It's quite interesting to find out how it all works. Now, have a think. Do you belong to a religious group or do you belong to just a, a group like a sports team? Do you wear a symbol to show that you belong to that? Maybe in one of your, in your picture that you drew, you wrote down there that I absolutely love football and you've got a special symbol to show that you belong to a special football club. Pause the video here to just have a think about what you do and what you value to demonstrate that you belong to that group. Now we're gonna think now again about how valuable you feel that you are and you, you are. Now for Christians, they, use a, they follow a book, and a, a book called the Bible as their sacred text. And for Christians, they believe that um, God teaches them that they are special, they are chosen and they are unique. I'm just gonna share with you now a part of the Bible. It's a special book in the Bible called Psalms. And Psalms are like songs and poems and things like that, that they would often, that Christians would often use to, um, to cry out to God in praise and in worship and also to share maybe some of their worries and concerns. They were written mainly by a man called King David back in the Bible times. And uh, he shared this Psalm as a way of thanking God for who he was and thanking God for making him feel unique and special. I'm gonna share the passage with you now. It says this, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, have a think about that. that. Those are some big, big words. And in fact, I've, I've unpicked some of the words on this next slide, just to get you to think about what those words actually mean. Now, have a, have a look at those words as I, as I consider some of these questions. How does it make you feel to know that maybe your life was planned before you came to be? And that actually um, your, your body was, uh, uh, was hidden in that secret place and it wasn't on view until you came to be that child and that ba baby and then that child that you are today. What do you think that tells you about how Christians feel? I wonder if they feel super special because they know that God has given them this life and that he was planned way before time. Now, the inmost being, God planned them in the inmost being, the deepest thoughts and reflections of a person. That's not just surface stuff. That's not just what you are created on the outside. That gives you those thoughts and feelings that we shared already at the start of this session. I want you to pause the video here. I'm going to show the actual verse again, and I want you to really think about what does this mean for you? Fantastic. I think it really makes Christians feel super special and super valued because they were thought of before time. Now, we're going to be thinking about some different worldviews now and actually what it means to have a worldview. And that helps us with how we belong and how we feel we fit into communities. So we're going to think about different opinions or worldviews that each of us have and how they shape our thinking or response to different situations. Now, here's a simple dictionary definition of worldviews. So let me just flick back to my PowerPoint. 
here's what the word worldview means. So it's a noun. It says your way of seeing the world, the bottom line of what you believe, why you believe it and how it makes you behave. Or it's a way of seeing the world that is shared by a group of people. Can you see how already that's fitting into what we've been thinking about already with how we feel and, and um, what beliefs we might already have? Now, everyone has their own worldview. Yours might be different to that of your friends or of your family. And now in this next little activity, we're gonna try and unpick your own personal worldview. Now to do this, I need you to draw a diagram. So please get your other piece of paper. And um, to help you do this, I wonder if you can draw a cross. So across the middle, a line across the middle and a line down. And then you can see I've done like a little target circle. So I've got a nice circle in the middle there, then a bit bigger, and then one right on the edge. So you need to draw uh, almost like a target board going from small, medium, and then large. Pause the video here to draw your outline. Brilliant, fantastic. Now, I want you to have a look at these statements. There's lots of statements on there. So I want you to really take them on. We've got they're all different things that are, are things that you might believe. So thinking back to our, our lovely person image, they're the different things that you might believe, that you might feel, yeah, that, that, that's a bit of me. So I'm gonna read through the list. And as I read through the list, I want you to consider if that's super important to you. If that is one thing that you think, yeah, I believe that. Okay, and we're aiming to try and choose four of them. So here's uh, the statement. It is my responsibility to stay healthy. Family is the most important thing. God created the world. Friends are the most important thing. We should look after the environment. Fighting is always wrong. Fighting is sometimes okay. You don't need to believe in God to be a good person. Hard work is vital. Kindness is, to others is crucial. It is important to be happy. God is the most powerful thing in the universe. Or my religion is more important than anything. So have a look at those different statements. Think carefully about what you believe. And I want you to choose the four statements that are most important to you. And I want you to write those in the middle of your target board in the four sections that you should have created. So have a look here. I've written mine right in the middle here. I've gone for family is the most important thing in this quarter. I've got kindness to others is crucial in this quarter. I've got fighting is always wrong in this quarter. And we, oh, what's my one? Uh, we should look after the environment in this quarter. Okay. So have a think and put one of each of the four statements you've chosen in each of those quarters in the centre circle. If you don't agree or think that any of those are the most important thing, then you can come up with four of your own. But four things that you think are the most important. Pause the video here to write your four statements now. Fantastic. Now, hopefully you've chosen your statements. If you would need to rewind the video just so that you can see them, then please do. But I'm just going to stop sharing the screen for a second. Because I want you to really think about now the next part of the circle. You probably already noticed I had some other bits of writing in the next um, quarters of the middle circle. So, in the ne next to each of your four beliefs that you've chosen, I want you to write why you hold that belief or that idea as super important. How did you come to think of them as important? For example, it could be a logical argument. So if you chose the healthy one, it could be, I'm keeping healthy because it will ensure that I am able to be strong and my body can fight against illnesses. 
that's a good logical argument if you chose that one. Or it might be about maybe family's important to me or something like that. And it might be a reason like actually um, my, my parents have, have influenced that decision in my life or that belief in my life. So have a think. I'm just going to share with you a couple from my, um, my little circle. So I've got family's the most important thing. I've written here, my grandparents and the fact that I belong to a big family with lots of cousins um, uh, has made me think this. Okay, so have a think. What, are, what has made you think about those strong beliefs? I've also gone for the one about the environment. So we should look after the environment. I've also said, I can see the impact of global warming and plastic pollution is, uh, and, and what plastic pollution is causing. So I, I can see that. So I want to do something about that, which is why I've got that strong belief. So I'm going to leave that on the screen just as a bit of a prompt for you. OK, so why do you have those beliefs? Who's influenced them? Or is there an argument for a logical reason as to why you think that's so important to you? So go for filling out this section now, everyone. Off you go. Pause the video here. Fantastic. I bet you're building up such a good picture of what you believe and why now. Okay, so now we're getting on to the outside circle. And if you've got different colours, go ahead, please use a different colour for this one. I found it really good to use different colours on mine. Now, I want you to write a sentence or a couple of phrases about how those central beliefs affect your outward behaviour. If an idea or a belief in the middle that you've written changes the way that you behave, then can you explain how? So let me give you an example. So that one about the family being the most important thing. I've got a big family, so that's why it gets me to think about that. But I've written here on the outside, what do I do as a response? I spend time with my family and spend time with, uh, with them as often as I can. And I speak to them. I celebrate great times and special occasions with them. So that's what I do because family is so important to me. For the plastic, uh, uh, the plastic pollution one that I mentioned about the environment, we should look after the environment. I said that my reasoning for that was because I can see the impact of global warming and plastic pollution. So as a response, my behavior is this. I recycle, reduce and reuse uh, my waste and I try not to use one use plastic. I make sure that I turn off lights when I'm not using them and heating when it's not needed. So my behaviors uh, have, an, uh, have a response to the fact that I believe that we should be looking after the environment. So I'm gonna pause the screen here. I want you to pause the video and I want you to have a go at writing down now in the outside section of each quarter, what do you do differently in your behaviours, in your outward behaviours, because of those, in, those important central beliefs. Pause the video here. Great. Now take a look at your target board and my target board and see if there are any similarities or any differences. Have a look. How does yours compare? Are there many differences? Are there many similarities? It is important to remember that these are not everything that make up a worldview, but they are a starting point. Now, to bring these worldviews into a community perspective, we're now going to focus on that second part of that definition of worldview. Let me show that to you again. Have a look at what it, what it says. So the second definition of worldview was a way of seeing the world that is shared by a group of people. So I wonder, are, are there a group of people out there who maybe hold these four things as really important as, as you do or as, as they do, uh, like my one? I wonder. Now, religion is a way that a group of people look at the world. So religions are types of worldviews, a bit like what I said right at the start of our video. 
Now, a quick look back at the second circle of your diagram will show you that everyone draws their worldviews from many different places. I've got family connections there. I've got what I see on the TV and the news with regards to global warming and plastic pollution. I talked about that logical argument about actually if you keep healthy and that's an important thing for you, that's so that your body can stay strong and fight off illness so that you have a long life. Really important things. But it's really important to remember that if we were to think about a religious group, say for example Christian, and talk about it as the Christian worldview, it's really important to remember that just because someone is a Christian, that does not mean that they will have exactly the same personal worldview as all other Christians. We need to be considerate of this when we explore how different religious people or non-religious people live in community over our next sessions. Now, I'm going to just stop sharing that definition. Now, as we come to the end of our first session together, I want you to look back at your own uh, picture that you drew right at the start and actually have your target board ready as well. Have a look at both of those. I wonder, what groups do you belong to? Are you part of a community? Why don't you have a discussion with your parents or the adults in your home today about the groups you belong to and maybe those strong belief systems, maybe get them to do the target board to see where their worldviews come from. Keep hold of these pieces of paper and as we go through our learning, we'll be able to complete our communities um, sessions book booklet together. And in our next session, we're going to be thinking about the different communities that we belong to and what values we have because of belonging to those communities. Thank you for spending time with me today. I hope you've uh, been able to spend some real time thinking about things and I shall see you in our next session. Thank you. Bye.